Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, I have another book haul for you today. Um, it's a kind of a mix of books that I picked up at a thrift store, library sale, uh, used bookstore, and Barnes and Noble. So, um, like I said, quite a mix. So I'm just going to go ahead and get stuck in. Uh, the first one is a book I picked up at a local thrift store, and it's it's called "It's Kind of a Funny Story" by Ned Bazzini. And this is kind of a YA contemporary. It's about um, a teenager named Craig Gilner, and he's very ambitious and entering high school. It's a special high school called Manhattan's Executive Pre-Professional High School. And I guess the pressure, it gets so much for him uh, that he ends up trying to commit suicide. So that winds him up in a mental hospital, and that's sort of what the basis of the story is about. Um, reading the back, it says that Ned Bazzini, the author himself, spent time in a psychiatric hospital. And he's created a remarkably moving tale about the sometimes unexpected road to happiness. So I've heard some really good things about this. I um, want to read a few more contemporary books. So yeah, I picked it up for two bucks, so I couldn't pass it up. The only uh, damage is just a little dog-eared kind of corner on the cover, but the rest is in excellent shape. So definitely want to pick that up. Uh, the next two books I picked up at my local library sale. The first one is Neil Gaiman, The Graveyard Book. This one I picked up for a dollar. And it's a hardcover um, it's got some really cool illustrations throughout the book. It's just black and white kind of ink illustrations. Uh -oh, kid there. And I'll go ahead and read the synopsis for you. It says, Nobody Owens, known to his friends as Bod, is a normal boy. He would be completely normal if he didn't live in a sprawling graveyard, being raised and educated by ghosts with a solitary guardian who belongs to neither the world of the living nor the dead. There are dangers and adventures in the graveyard for a boy, an ancient indigo man beneath the hill, a gateway to a desert leading to an abandoned city of ghouls, the strange and terrible menace of the Sleer. But if Bod leaves the graveyard, then he will come under attack from the man Jack, who has already killed Bod's family. Beloved master storyteller Neil Gaiman returns with a luminous new novel for the audience that embraced his New York best-selling classic Coraline. Um, this is this magical, terrifying, and filled with breathless breathtaking adventures. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I really like Neil Gaiman's. Um, I read Neverwhere, or actually listened to it, an audio version of it, and I really enjoyed it. So uh, I definitely wanted to read something else by him, and for a dollar I couldn't pass this one up. Um, I just recently did a tag called Breaking the Spines tag, where I talked about, you know, I, I, I'm really careful with my books and everything, and if I find a book that's, you know, a really good deal, I won't mind that it's got a spine that's bad. Like this one, actually, surprisingly, for paperback, had a perfectly good spine. This one is a hardcover, looks perfect, but if you open up the book, it actually has a correct spine, so I thought that was kind of interesting. You could like see right down to like the glue in there, but that's the only the only damage that the book really has is just that one kind of crack. And you can't even see that with hardcovers. So that's the one they sing about hardcovers. Uh, the other book I picked up at the library, I got this one, this was just 50 cents. And I already have a copy of the book um, in these Penguin Deluxe Classic Editions. And I just couldn't pass this one up. It's uh, Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. There's no actual dust jacket on this. I'm not sure if it came with one originally or not. And when you open it up, it shows that it was. Uh, it has illustrations with wood engravings by Fritz Eichenberg. And it was published by in New York by Random House Publishers in 1943. You just about see that. That's one of the uh, wood engravings, which I thought were really cool. Um, and it has like double, double column text, and there's another illustration. Some of them are full page, and some are just headers at the top. But they were really, really quite interesting. I love the detail um, in, in the various illustrations. So, eh, I don't know. If, don't think it's worth anything, but it definitely is uh, intriguing and interesting. So. Um, probably just keep that one as a collector and I'll read my paperback edition that I have. Uh, the next uh, three books I picked up at Half Price Books. Um, I have had two of the books in this series before. One is an ARC copy and one is a hardcover copy. And I didn't actually own a copy of the third one. I had rented it out. So kind of a hodgepodge um, editions of it that I had. So when I saw this one, I totally jumped at it because I actually like these covers better. They're from the UK. And what I'm referring to is the Maze Runner Trilogy by James Dashner. And when I saw this was all wrapped up and everything, so it had not even been touched, uh, you know, for a used bookstore. It was in mint condition, un unused. And I thought this was actually like a box around it, but it's just a paperback that was then shrink-wrapped around. And there's something about the UK covers in these that I just absolutely like. 
for some reason, more than the, the U.S. one. So that's the Maze Runner. Um, that's book two, The Scorch Trials. And that's book three, The Death Cure, which, like I said, I didn't even have a copy of. So I was really happy to get a complete set of these. And these, of course, are a little bit stiffer, but, you know, at least I have a matching set now, and, and I'm really, really glad I was able to track those down. And the last three books I have are just ones I picked up at Barnes & Noble. Well, one of them is an ARC book. It's an adult horror called The Demonologist, and this is by Andrew Piper. I've never read anything by this author. Apparently, he's the best-selling author of the book Lost Girls, The Killing Circle. And this particular book, it says it's in development with Robert Zemeckis and Universal Studios, so it might possibly uh, end up being a movie. And it's coming out in March of 2013, published by Simon & Schuster. It's a fairly thin book. Um, this is just... You know, this is the art copy, so not sure how much it'll change um, on the cover design, but I'll read a little bit of the synopsis here for you. Professor David Allman's ex expertise in the literature of the demonic, notably Milton's Paradise Lost, has won him wide acclaim, but David is a scholar, not a believer. One afternoon, he receives a visitor at his campus office, a strikingly thin woman who offers him an invitation. Travel to Venice, Italy, witness a phenomenon, and offer his professional opinion in return for an extravagant sum of money. With his marriage in shambles and needing a fresh start, David accepts and heads to Italy with his beloved 12-year-old daughter, Tess. What happens in Venice will send David on an unimaginable journey from skeptic to true believer. In a terrifying quest guided by symbols and riddles from the pages of Paradise Lost, David must rescue his daughter from the unnamed, a demonic entity that has chosen him as its messenger. And if he does not fulfill his duty, the demon will soon claim Tess for its own. Um, one of the... Um, reviewers here kind of describe it as Dan if, as if Dan Brown were writing horror um, so it has those kind of aspects like a Dan Brown book like Angels and Demons and things so sounds really interesting I'm um, looking for a little bit more horror to read and maybe some more adult books too so I was glad to pick that up as an ARC copy uh, the next two books I purchased from Barnes & Noble uh, I've seen these on um, up and coming due out this year and I really couldn't wait to to grab a hold of them um, this first one is The Archive and this is by Victoria Schwab it's just a gorgeous cover on this one. It has that kind of rubbery, buttery feel to it. I don't know how to describe it, but it's pretty interesting. It's like a house scene in the back here. And I'll read the synopsis for you. Oh, and that's the inside fly so It's really just it's really beautiful. Um, it's just kind of plain on the outside. Uh, so, the synopsis. Imagine a place where the dead rest on shelves like books. Each body has a story to tell, a life, seen in pictures that only librarians can read. The dead are called histories, and the vast realm in which they rest is the archive. Da, D-A, first brought Mackenzie Bishop here four years ago, when she was 12 years old, frightened but determined to prove herself. Now Da is dead, and Mac has grown into what he once was, a ruthless keeper, tasked with stopping often violent histories from waking up and getting out. Because of her job, she lies to the people she loves, and she knows fear for what it is, a useful tool for staying alive. Being a keeper isn't just dangerous, it's a constant reminder of those Mac has lost. Da's death was hard enough, but now that her little brother is gone too, Mac starts to wonder about the boundary between living and dying, sleeping and waking. In the archive, the dead must never be disturbed, and yet someone is deliberately altering histories, erasing essential chapters. Unless Mac can piece together what remains, the archive itself may crumble and fall. Um, yeah, so it sounds, sounds really good. A very, uh, very unique kind of plot line. I've not come across anything like that, so I'm kind of anxious to get a hold, of, get get into that one. Hopefully soon. <laughs> and the very last book I picked up, um, loved book one. I, I'm, I'm hoping it's as good as book one was, and it's another fairy tale retelling. If you haven't guessed it yet, this is Scarlet, and that's by Marissa Meyer. First book was Cinder. This is book two in the Lunar Chronicles, and it's sort of a fairy tale retelling of Little Red Riding Hood. I'm, of course, not going to read the synopsis to you because um, it is kind of a continuing story, even though it's based on a different fairy tale. But it continues the story from um, book one. So I'm just dying to get into this one. The first book was excellent. If you haven't had a chance to read it, what are you waiting for? you got to pick it up. So that's the end of my book haul. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found something that you might want to add to your list. And uh, let me know what you guys have picked up this week. Thanks for watching. Happy reading.